I worked with The Last of Us and uh, Sony PlayStation to develop the online tests that uh, some of you have taken, right? Have you taken the tests, the questionnaire? Everybody here took it? Yeah? Were you happy about your scores? So-so? Okay. So let me give you a little bit of a background on the test. So uh, my research is in on gaming psychology. So we do a lot of work on um, um, what sort of uh, psychological traits uh, are relevant uh, to do well on various games and also what impact games have uh, on um, what psychological impacts different games have. And for this particular project, we were interested in kind of a identifying the main strengths and competencies that uh, on the one hand would help you do well on the game and on the other hand would also help you survive a similar kind of a, a post-apocalyptic or pandemic uh, scenario okay so situations that uh, put you uh, to the test that test the limits of your resiliency and uh, that create a lot of stress and that are very unpredictable and different from uh, the situations you encounter um, most of the time. Um, so the questions that you completed, oops, okay, so this is a test that you have completed and you might remember there were different questions uh, that you were asked. Um, we did not actually take your answers uh, at face value, so we didn't rely on uh, how well you know yourself or how uh, honest you were answering these questions. All we did is compare your answer your answers to people who uh, are uh, better able or worse able to actually cope with uh, extreme situations. Okay, so imagine it's all based on uh, probabilities and you were benchmarked against people who are uh, very well equip equipped to survive extreme situations. Um, this was the first part of the test, then there was a second part that uh, gave you scenarios. So this is what we call a situational judgment test. And you can see not just video games, but live in itself as a psychological test or a series of psychological tests. In fact, uh, some of you may have noticed that uh, you were uh, tested here on site. If not, uh, uh, I don't know, did anybody notice anything strange when you went to the clock room to check your codes? No? <laughs> okay. So one of the uh, clock room attendants wasn't very helpful and did not want to leave your code but uh, asked you to do it yourself. Did anybody notice that? Oh, yeah. yeah? Okay, so that was a test of your emotional intelligence, your ability to actually persuade the cloakroom attendant to actually help you. Help you. And uh, apparently nobody did. Everybody said, well, you know, I just uh, am not very helpful and I'll do it myself. Yeah? Did anybody manage to persuade her? No? Did anybody notice anything um, peculiar when you went to the toilet, perhaps? Did anybody use a sink that was covered with blood or, uh, or uh, pieces of a broken mirror? Yeah. yeah? That, was a, that was a test of your mental toughness. You had the, the possibility to use a VIP sink, which was a lot nicer and cleaner. Uh, apparently nobody did. You all, you know, you're clearly all sensation seekers or adrenaline junkies, so you didn't care about that. And uh, you went for... Maybe you have a higher appetite for risk and danger. Uh, did anybody consume anything at the bar? Where you had to put your uh, hand inside a kind of a um, you know, jar full of blood, little babies? No? But, uh, okay, that again was a test of uh, uh, whether you're uh, <coughs> an alcoholic or no. It was a test not <laughs> probably a desperation, but of whether uh, you can handle extreme situations. So whether you're a test of your mental toughness. And here in this very room, we have actually five chairs that are broken. Uh, that was a test of your practical intelligence to see whether you actually you would fix them and sit there. I don't think anybody has done that. You just simply avoided them or just sat <laughs> on the broken chairs. Uh, anyway, did anybody attempt to fix it? No? <laughs> um, and, uh, so, and the final test is... Uh, the final factor here that will help you do well in the game and survive an extreme situation, which is whether you're lucky or not. You know, some people are luckier than others, and of course, regardless of your emotional intelligence, your practical intelligence, uh, your mental toughness, I haven't talked about law for science, but David's presentation coming up now will explain to you why it is important to understand science and biology in order to survive uh, post-apocalyptic scenarios, but some of you are luckier than others, and uh, for those of you who are luckier, 
uh, you might have a little surprise under your chair now, a little bully. So you might want to check whether there is something under your chair. Um, <laughs> There were seven lucky chairs in total. Uh, and likewise, some of you, or conversely, I should say, some of you are unlucky. So uh, there's a couple of people who uh, would not have received any gifts or presents when you came in. Can I know who they are? Did anybody not receive anything? So you're very low on luck. Yeah. <laughs> anybody else? Okay, so you're even unluckier because you're the only one. Uh, okay, so, and just one more thing uh, to tell you, which is that I, I will be available um, after the presentations today in case you have uh, additional questions on your feedback, if you remember how you did on the test. Uh, I'm available not for a, a long counseling or psychotherapy <laughs> session, but I can give you a little bit uh, um, of additional feedback, explanations, not just on your scores and profile, but on how the game uh, was developed. Okay? Thank you for your time. <laughs>